Welcome back to episode okay. one, one of Chaotically Intolerant. Uh, we have Michael and Caleb here today. It is Wednesday. Well, if you're listening to this, it's Thursday. It's opening day. We made it through the very long winter. Um, but Wednesday is probably the most dead day in sports. We have no March Madness. Um, no spring training games today. Maybe there are. No, definitely not. Uh, everyone's straddling back. No. Um, NFL, I mean, the NFL rules are getting fucking weird. No hip drop tackle anymore. Uh, although I do like the kickoff. The kickoff was nice. We're actually going to have kickoff returns this year, which is really good. No hockey, really no hockey, no NBA. None of that's interesting. Um, but I did watch the Dynasty documentary. I finished that on Apple Apple TV. Caleb, you're a Patriots fan. Is Bill Belichick the worst person on the planet? Because that's what that documentary made it seem like. According to Kraft Productions, yeah, he's he's the worst person ever. He had nothing to do with the Super Bowls. He had nothing to do with the Dynasty. It was all... Robert Kraft, and it was all Tom Brady. Robert Kraft even said Tom Brady was sensitive, and his feelings are sensitive in that documentary, which is, I mean, that, and that's outrageous to say, in my opinion. Like, you can't say that about your Super Bowl winning quarterback. You're your sixth time Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Patriots. Okay. Um, well, uh, let's get into it. We're going to jump into baseball here. Um, opening day again is tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do three storylines that we're watching. Um, I guess I'll start with a couple of mine, and then I think you guys can dive more into it. I, I have to get back, really, really back into it. Um, I'm really excited for Jaron Duran. I want to see what Jaron Duran's going to do. Um, this is supposed to be a big year for him. I had a lot of complaining the past couple of years, you know, really questioning his, his ability as a ball player, especially in Boston. But um, I, I think he can really – Really tear it up this year. Um, and then I'm really curious, because obviously the Dodgers and the, and the Shohei thing, I think I, that's why I is, is Shohei. And my gambling and everything that's going on with that. Um, and then I'm also curious about what the, how the Braves are going to fit into this situation, because the Dodgers feel like just that runaway contender, right? They, they feel like they are number one, like there's no one that will no even, even fight them. And the Braves are just sitting right there. They're like, yeah, we're a pretty fucking good team, too. Like, we're we're right here. You know, don't doubt us here. Um, Spencer Strider is starting for them uh, against the Phillies, right? So they're, they're playing the Phillies tomorrow? Yeah. Wheeler and Strider. Yeah, and um, Strider is the Braves' child, from from my understanding. Um, so I'm, I'm really curious as to how he's going to react. Um, but... Uh, I guess, Mike, if you want to start with your storyline, your turtle lines. Yeah, well, I mean, right now the Dodgers have the most losses in baseball, so that's great. Um, it's exciting to see them, you know, one and one, I guess. Right, technically tomorrow's not even opening day. I mean, it is, but we have those two soul games. Uh, I would say, yeah, I would say the Dodgers in general are the biggest storyline, but the American League is interesting because it feels like, you know, the National League, Kind of feels like a two, a two man race, you know. I mean, although the Phillies have been in the NLCS the last two years, and so they've been kind of the team that gets forgotten in the regular season, comes through in the playoffs. Um, the NL storyline feels like that kind of heavyweight bout between the Dodgers and Braves. Maybe the Cubs are in that discussion. Who knows? But the American League, and how about the Orioles? How about my Orioles going as a trendy pick? They were the consensus, which is the kiss of death, but the consensus MLB.com. AL World Series uh, participant. So can they live up to expectations? Can they dethrone the, I would say, the Texas teams? The uh, the state, of, you know, the state of Texas has hosted the uh, World Series the last five years, if you include the yeah, end of the We got to get it out of there. Yeah, there, there have been World Series games played in the state of Texas in each of the last five seasons. So the Orioles, maybe a couple other teams have a chance to... Uh, to change that. Uh, but will they live up to the hype and will they break through in the American league? That's a big one for me. I think a big part of the Orioles this year is Tom Bradish. He had a nutty year last year. He was top five in Cy Young voting, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. And I don't know if they've gotten clear um, report on what what's going on with him, what his timetable is, but if they can get him back, I think that makes that rotation even Scarier, definitely. Yeah, they signed Corbin Burns in the offseason. I mean, that that was. I feel like that was a little bit of like, hey, we're ready to spend. And then, did they sign him after they got sold? Is that right, or was it right before? Because it was kind of the same. The sale actually just went through officially today. It was 
it was still my day. I, when was the day down? The like beginning of the off season, maybe a, a couple weeks in. So I I thought it was like okay, we're here to spend. Like I, I think that was even though they weren't fully in control, you know, they were probably pulling the strings. They were saying, hey, listen, like, we want we want to sign some big name free agents. I thought they were going to sign more. To be honest, I thought they were really going to get aggressive this year. Um, well, but you know, Burns is a trade. He's basically a rental at this point because he's a Boris guy playing in his walk year. So there's a sense that it was like a big move, but at the same time, it, it's a little more of a win now kind of move because I don't know that they're going to be able to resign him. Look at what's happened with the Boris guys this off season and how long they've had to wait to get jobs. And I thought maybe the Orioles would, would push to go after Snell or Montgomery who were still out there for a while until they both just signed in the NL West recently. Uh, I saw Michael Elias. He was on my flight a few weeks ago. I told him, Hey, nice job on the Burns trade. He just kind of, quietly nodded um but yeah bradish honestly that that is a big part of it the, the development of grayson rodriguez is a big part as well um tyler wells guy that showed a lot of promise you know, they have the they have the potential most dangerous word in all sports potential to have a very good rotation it was a big I, I wouldn't say it was a sore spot for them last year it's not like they were bad obviously bradish was in you know top five in cy young but it, it, you knew it was going to be hard for them to make a deep postseason run with where they, with where they were with that rotation. Um, so if that steps up, now they're without Felix Batista this year. Craig Kimbrell was their solution to replace him. Um, he started off horribly in the spring and started to pitch better. I don't know if Yenny or Cano is the answer at closer. So you may see a little bit of a revolving door. You may see them go after somebody, you know, when deadline time rolls around because obviously they're not going to have Batista this year. I would have loved to have seen them go after Josh Hader, but they're banking on Batista to return in 2025. So they feel like they can get through it with Kimbrel, who's never Kimbrel's problem hasn't so much been the regular season. He's usually been pretty solid in most of his regular seasons. It's been the postseason where he has faltered. So uh I remember those hard twenty eighteen he gave us as Red Sox fans. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we would have found in Boston if it wasn't for, like, gone back to Boston if it wasn't for some really great defensive plays. And, and the ALDS, the end of the ALCS, there were two massive plays. They don't really talk about the ALDS, um, but the ALCS definitely meant integrity. Um, so I guess we'll lead off with the American. I want to talk about the Red Sox because sir, to it, stop Shimon at the boat. Seriously. Are we ignoring my storylines? We'll talk about your storylines. We're, we're talking about the Red Sox. The Red Sox is the number one storyline on this show. Um, I know a lot of Red Sox fans are really bitching and moaning about, you know, like we're not going to contend this year. I, I go back and forth with it because I'm like, well, we have won four titles in the last 20 years. At the same time, my, my more gripe is it's not, it's like so disingenuous. The ownership is so disingenuous in my opinion. Like they don't get, they, they say they're going full throttle and then they don't. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, we do want to sign some guys. We do want to compete. And it really doesn't seem like they really want to compete. Um, but again, I've always said my psyche is ruined because of 2021, 2013. Um, the other thing that really gets me nervous is that in the early, early 1900s, the Red Sox were the Yankees, right? We were really, really fucking good. We won a ton of titles. I think we won five titles in the early night. Is that right? Five because it was Yankees. Four. I think I think four Red Sox are four. eight right now, and they won. I think four in that time period, and four in this century. So it's, I mean, yes, like we know what happened. We sold off Babe Ruth, and then that cursed us forever. We we sold our souls for dude. And you saw? I don't know. This always just deep. Um, we sold our souls early in the early IT hundreds, right? We're doing it again. We won the four titles in the early 2000s, and then we sell our soul. We sell movie bets to the Dodgers because we wanted to be cheap. We wanted to fund our owners, other other sports teams. And that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm a little afraid that this might come back to bite us like long term. Like, what if, what if we have another curse? What cur curse of the vets? Like, or a curse of Bogarts? Cur curse of the Killer Bees? Like, we let all those guys go, which Ben Intendi was the story. Then I mean, that's an. Uh, Bogarts, but um, I think I think ownership is really disingenuous. That's my issue with the Red Sox. I still think we can compete. Like me and Kaylin have talked about it before. I think our rotation is a little better than you really get credit for. Although losing Giolito was really big, 
Um, and then obviously not signing Montgomery. Like, if the, I, I don't really understand why we couldn't flip Kenley and then go and get Montgomery because Kenley is un, is unhappy. This team going nowhere, and they're paying sixteen million dollars to a closer. There's no reason he should be on the books for this year if they're not trying. Even if that's the clear money for God knows what Michael Lorenzen or or uh, yeah, Mike Flatter, that's the other guy that's out there. It's just someone because there's five guys in this rotation. Your six is Cooper Criswell, who throws eighty-seven miles an hour. Had a good spring, but I. Don't know if I trust them. I mean, it's surprising uh, to see the Red Sox kind of in this. I mean, they were the they were the big spenders for a couple decades. Um, but yeah, hard to imagine they don't finish and last. Honestly, yeah. Even in previous else, last, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Even in previous last place finishes, like the seasons before or after, they're trying. They're spending money. Whether how, however bad Pablo Sandoval or Haley Ramirez was, they were at least trying. They were spending the money, and now. We get a Cooper Criswell and a and a and a Tyler O'Neill and an injured Lucas Giolito. I'm I'm just not much to get excited about. I'm just looking up the season finishes from the last you know whatever season. Well, it's worst um, first to worst. I mean, and one, two, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, and I think fifteen. They were also last or or near the bottom of the American League East, and then. Came back, won the division three straight years after that. So they kind of run in streaks. As Caleb said, they've spent, I mean, Dombrowski, of course, you bring Dombrowski in, you know you're going to spend. That's the, that's like the, the pre, uh, precursor to a big spending spree, which is what he's done in previous stops with Florida and Detroit and now Philadelphia. Um, and those teams have, you know, they, they mortgaged the future in a sense. Um, but those teams were all in win now modes and they won i mean right the tigers got to world series florida won a world series philly's been there so i, I don't know it's like a, a full reset oh but not even but close to a full reset for the Sox. I'm, I'm looking at the history right now so if you start in 98 right they went second 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 third first second second Third, third, and then as soon as you lo lose Terry Francona, it's down and then back up and down and back up. So they're just there's no consistency. I mean, and and great, you won you won a bunch of titles, but I feel like you need some consistency as well to really appease the fans. Although fans are going to come anyways, that's the biggest problem. Like they're going to be there April through August, probably. Like and especially like this team was on base for about eighty four, eighty six runs last year. So I think they're treating it like. They were some shit, like shitty, horrible team that like couldn't do anything. Like they won like fifty games last year, like the Orioles, you know, five five years ago, and they won the loss. They lost one hundred and ten games. They were in the playoff race in August. They finished with the exact. They finished with seventy eight wins, which, I mean, I would say other divisions that's not last place. You're finishing third, maybe maybe fourth place with seventy eight wins. We're just if it held central divisions, they would have been tied for second or in third. That sound like that's yeah, like they were. I mean, the AL East, but that's always been the AL East. We can't expect anything different. Um, which, if we're also, we might be getting some sort of uh realignment as well, which maybe we can dive into that on another episode. Realigning Major League Baseball if they added the two. So, yeah, the Red Sox, not, not, not a lot of positive to talk about. Um, let's see, uh, let's jump into Baltimore again. So, um, Caleb, you were talking about uh, Baltimore. You're really interested in their kind of storylines there. Um, and Michael, you are an Orioles fan, so this is just the biggest year for the Orioles in recent history. The most exciting. Yeah, I think it, it's definitely the one of the most highly anticipated seasons because even when they were in their five year run between 12 and 16, I, I don't know that anyone ever quite expected greatness it was always very cautious optimism and they kind of did the every other year thing too they had five winning seasons but they didn't make the playoffs in 13 or 15 so going into those the 12 14 16 seasons it was like we could be good you know it's exciting and then even going into 17 which blew up in their face um they haven't had this much excitement since really since the mid 90s in 96 97 um 
when they went to back to back American League Championship Series. This is a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal because they really surprised in 22, and there were definitely some expectations last year, which they blew those out of the water, getting 101 wins. Um, and now with the youth they have coming through the pipeline, with the fact that they had this great season, with the fact that the Yankees are not the big bad Yankees, the Red Sox are not the big bad Red Sox. Like the, the division is there for the taking. Even the rest of the American League potentially is there for the taking. Um, there is a lot of excitement uh, for Orioles fans. Again, very cautious when you consider that they've only won what uh, they won a postseason series in 2014. And that's the only postseason series they've won since the 96, 97 division series. Um, well, and I mean, not to, the why they won the wild card game in 2012, but um, this is, yeah, this is definitely the most anticipated season in since at least the nineties. My thing with the Orioles too, is they've got this, this whole thing of expectation with all these, these young big leaders they've got up. But I don't think there's a, a whole lot of pressure on them to perform this year as much as there will be down the line because they've still got a stacked farm system. They've still got Jackson Holiday who's going to come up hopefully some point this year. They've got uh, Kobe Mayo who's going to – he looks really – looked really good in spring training. looks pretty good in, in AAA last year. And then uh, Connor Morby, I like watching him at ECU. I think he's moving up their system as well. So they've got guys that they can either flip for – Corbin Burns' replacement in the future if he doesn't re-sign, or they've got some more stud young hitters. Yeah, they, um, I, I know Holiday got sent back down, but that's just more, I think that's for service time more than anything, um, which again is like, come on, man. I mean, that shit is so annoying sometimes. Like, again, it's a business, but in the end of the day, you're still fine like baseball, and the service time excuse is ridiculous to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's they like fall up line for like, it's not really like a, it's not a great excuse. It just is to me. It's kind of a dollar excuse. Um, but I, I'm really like, this is like the first time I've seen a team in the AL East that I'm like, hey, I kind of like this team. Like, I, you know, I'm never rooting for the Yankees. I never like the Yankees. Um, Toronto is meh. Tampa, you know, they're going to choke in, in whatever round of playoffs they make. Like, they just, they cannot get it done. Um, but like, this Baltimore team is just fun. They're young. They have something you want to see. And if it was anyone else, you know, the Red Sox aren't going to win it. I would love to see Baltimore. And the Red Sox definitely aren't going to win it. So I will be rooting for Baltimore. Um, the Yankees are... Seems like they they just can't get the injury bug off of them. And it's it's just a shame, right? It's just such a shame. So sad that then the big bad Yankees just keep complaining and crying. I'm tearing up, man. Sox, uh, you really feel for them. On the real, I don't, I don't celebrate injury or pray for injury because... I pissed. I got injured. I know it's like it sucks. And I mean, I like seeing Rafael Devers take Derek Oldie three times a year. So it, it, as soon as he gets back, maybe the better. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's weird to see the Yankees not spending the kind of money we expected either. I mean, they were talk in talks of you know with Snell. They put an offer out there, which I'm guessing he wishes he took now. Um, you know, he got more average annual value, but just with two years and a first year opt out from the Giants and Montgomery was in the mix. They got Strom and that doesn't feel like the move that puts them, you know, from 82 wins to suddenly in the mix. I mean, you look at the odds makers, they haven't favored. And I, I don't know on what planet they deserve to be one of the top favorites right now, especially with Cole on the shelf for probably at least a couple of months. I mean, yes. So, you know, in theory, at least a couple of years ago, if you said some, to someone, hey, they're going to have San Stanton, Soto and Judge in the lineup, you'd say, well, they're going to hit 400 home runs. Uh, but it just hasn't worked out like that for the Yankees. And I think for a long time, there was, and I know the Red Sox always did well against them in the postseason, but there was always, in my mind, a, like a, a an intimidation factor that teams had against the Yankees, certainly in the 90s. And I think it carried over a little bit into the 2000s. Um, and then, you know, they won again in 09. But that has really gone by the wayside. And you know, so much of the Yankees and, and what they do is, is their brand. And it's not that they don't have a big brand, but it just doesn't feel like they represent that big, bad dragon to slay anymore. And that narrative has just got to be shocking for the fan base. And I, I don't see that. I mean, I see them being better than 82 wins, but I don't know if I see them being better than 90, honestly, this year, especially if they don't know what they're going to get from Cole. 
some notable names that are injured right now. Um, you have who? LeMayhew, uh, Tommy Canely um, on March 6th, he was out. Uh, Jason Dominguez, March 8th, out. Uh, Garrett Cole, obviously, he's out. Um, and then Oscar Gonzalez as well, right fielder out. And that's just like some of the guys. There, there's even more um, that, that you can mention. So they are, you know, obviously we don't root for injuries here, but I do root for Yankee fans constantly going online and crying about their team. Um, and the honestly, is it? I think there's something just to the Yankee or the the business. Like they are just not fun. Like you look at Yankee Stadium, it looks like a bank to me. The outside looks like you're going into a corporate office. It's like I'm not going to a baseball game. I need to dress up in a suit and tie today. That's not fun. Like especially in this new generation of ball players, they, you know, the let the kids play thing. That was a big thing a few years ago, and I think that really showed. Like the Yankees give a shit about your facial hair. Which is ridiculous. Like, why can't why can't you have a beard, right? They're like, oh, it's tradition. It's tradition. Well, that tradition hasn't worked in the last 10, 15 years. Like, the last your last title was two thousand nine. Yeah, it, no, your last title was two thousand nine. That was the that was in the two thousand. We are in twenty twenty four now. That's what what happened in two thousand nine. You were preparing for twenty twelve for the world to end. I guess that's the most notable thing that happened in two thousand nine. The Patriots then went on their second dynasty run. That's what happened in 2009. That's just crazy to me that they still care about stuff. Like well, though, when the Red Sox went to the World Series, it was kind of like the anti-Yankees, right? They did the whole beard thing. The and, and the well, the, the idiots in 04, the beards in 2013. Um, it, it is silly. It, it, it's really, I mean, you'd think that they would have changed that by now, but tradition's tradition, as they say. Uh, did you have anything on that, Hill? Yeah, I I mean, I hate the tradition, obviously, but my one thing on the Yankees is I don't hate their lineup when it's healthy. Um, as much as I hate to say that, Judge Soto is probably the best duo in baseball. Stanton, if he's healthy, can pump you 30 homers. LeMayhews, if he's not washed up, he's not bad. Rizzo is was bad because of a concussion last year, so I heard on from Yankee fans on Twitter, but we'll see how he does this year. But I I don't hate that lineup. But the pitching staff is really what sketches me out and keeps me from putting them close to the Orioles. What is or say say something about the Rays for the Blue Jays because they are the least relevant teams I think in these in this division. This the whole the whole deal with the Blue Jays last year was I guess the clubhouse issues. There was a lot of immaturity going on. They brought in Justin Turner. They brought back Kevin Kiermaier. May not be the biggest superstars, but they're guys that can come in and leave the clubhouse and get people's crap together. I got nothing on the race. Yeah, same old story with them. Best case, 92 wins. Take up a wild card spot, do nothing with it. I was I was in a class yesterday, and somebody was talking about uh, uh, their, their electricity bill. They were doing a project on their electricity bill, and they brought up brain, was it brain leak or something like that, is where... You know, like there's Tampa, you know, they have three colleges there and they might have a lot of people leaving. You know, they, they build up all these people, they build them up in their farm system through college and then all the intelligence leaves. And I told her, like, write about the race. Like, I know you know nothing about baseball, but write about the race and how they just sell everything off. They, they, they build up all their stuff and then sell it off. Um, so maybe that'll get Roxley County Commission. I don't know. I don't even know why I thought about it last yesterday. I was saying that's just a great point to make. Uh, on to the NL Central or AL Central. Again, nothing fun here. There's there's just no fun going on in the middle of the country in the American League. Um, I guess the wins are kind of the the default. <laughs> they're kind of the default to win this one. Yeah, I mean they're the they're the favorite. I guess um, betting wise, I think Detroit has some exciting young players. Cleveland just they just don't score runs. I mean they never are exciting. The Royals patched up their rotation. They'll be a little better. They're a dark horse for Yeah, and the White Sox are just Cole Reagan's is nasty rebuild effort. He's good. He's really good, yeah. And that that trade to fleece the Rangers to give him a shaky or all this Chapman who got a ring, whatever, but they give up Cole Reagan's um Bobby Witt Jr. Yeah, I don't know. I'll just make my prediction that the World Series representative is not coming out of the American League Central. 
I mean, it won't, it won't be the twins. If it is, it's it's somebody other than the twins because they're just they should be banned. If they can't win in the playoffs, they really can't. And when they should have had a parade when they beat the Jays last year in the wild card round, but the Jays are like their mirror image, right? So the Jays, the A's, the Rays, the Mariners are all the, the twins are the, all the exact same team. And it's just that's a third of the American League right there that just does the same. It's a, a definition of insanity, it's doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, somebody's got to win it. Baseball wants to reward geography or whatever or, or punish teams, I guess, for geography at the same stretch. That's all I got to say on the Central. I got the Tigers taking it. I'm I'm very, oh very God. the Tigers this year. Dude, I mean, you got Torkelson, a 1-1 pick, hit 30 bombs last year in his first Fully healthy season, I think. Uh, Riley Green looked good. He's got another year under his belt. Uh, Tarek Skubal is going to be a Cy Young candidate. This dude's coming. He had like a 2-8 ERA last year in, in almost 100 innings. He's got a fully healthy year this year. He's gotten better every single year. I think he's a Cy Young candidate. He's pumping 99, upper 90s. They picked up Ken Maeda, uh Mark Chana, Andrew Chafin for some depth, and they called up uh, Colt Keith, their top prospect, who they just paid a pretty good contract. He was hitting 305 in the minors last year, 27 bombs and 932 OPS. So it's looking like he's going to be the opening day second baseman. And if he puts up any kind of numbers close to that, I feel like the Tigers could be pretty scary in the Central. I mean, it's relative to the division, but. I'm going to counter you with something. One name. That's by the worst hitter in that just said the ugliest hitter of baseball, Javi Baez. Yeah, neither you say that. But he's still Is the team fielder on the planet. Oh, great fielder. Can't hit the fucking ball. Can't lay anything up. I feel like we did this last year with the Tigers. I felt like they were like the dark horse to come out of the central again. And they they did nothing. Like Eduardo Rodriguez literally disappeared from the team for like three weeks. Like they just been nowhere he was. They're like, we don't know where this guy's at. He's just gone. I, I, if I had to pick a team, I probably would pick the Tigers too. I've been keen on them. I don't think I'm like over the moon, and I wouldn't be shocked if they also <laughs> plummet. But I, I'll, I'll go with them. Caleb's made some good points. I mean, they have they, it, it, it's the young hitters that excite me more than what they're doing with their pitching staff, honestly. Um, but they play in a pitcher's park, which I guess will help their pitchers. Could hurt their hitters, but yeah, they're not winning a playoff series. But I, I like them to run away with the sample for the most part. I mean, Torkelson's hitting thirty homers in that ballpark. It's, I, I think I think he can get to forty if Miguel Cabrera can get to forty. Enough South. Torkelson's got to pop like that. They are the NFC South. That's what they are. Like if you want to hear that in football terms, they are the, the AL Central is the NFC South. They won't win a playoff game. Well, the NFC South didn't win a playoff game. It's like Irish for my comparison, but. You know, they normally won't win a playoff game. Um, the, I guess I guess more we'll do predictions at the end because we're just talking going down the mission. Um, to the West, uh, pro- I think probably the most competitive of the American League. Um, Houston and Texas, obviously, those are two of the perennials right now. Um, what do you guys think about Seattle? I'm, I'm curious on the thoughts on Seattle. Won't believe it until I see it. I'm kind of on the same page as that. I, I don't love the moves they made, uh, trading away Robbie Ray, trading away Eugenio Suarez. Uh, there was probably one other I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but they don't look competitive. They're bringing in guys to fill s- certain holes. I like the Polanco pickup, but I'd rather have Eugenio Suarez than Ray Blanco. I, I like their pitching, but I I like like Michael said, I, you gotta, I, I wouldn't see it first. Yeah, it's like they're they're content to be good, and then from good, they don't want to go to great. They just want to go to really good. But they refuse to make the moves to go to great. And to me, that's why they're sort of just in that raised territory, and they are the one major league team that has never played a World Series game. Uh, so I don't think I see that changing this year. No, I could see them like the Rays in the sense. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I could see them being like the Rays in a sense. Like there's already rumors that they were shopping – Maybe a George Kirby or, or Bryce Miller for the right price. Yeah. So you, they've got a good young staff, but who knows how long those guys are going to be there. Well, they, I mean, they had a great opportunity last year, that final week of the season, and they're probably thinking that could have been us instead of Texas because they beat Texas that last series, and Texas still got in as the wild card instead of Seattle. 
And then Texas went on the run. And I think people are still sleeping on Texas, which is exactly what the Rangers want. They, they don't want that attention. If they were the defending world champs and all of a sudden everyone's, they don't have a target on their backs. It's the Dodgers. It's still the Astros. It's the, to me, the state of Texas is still going to be the team that wins that division. It's not going to be the Angels or the A's. I know that. I don't think they're going yeah, to I, I wanted. I want to combine for enough wins to win a division team. Say, son, give me one nice thing about either the Angels or the A's, one or the other. Angels have a very – I like their stadium. I've always liked it. Been, um, the A's have those fans that are – you know, they hit the drums and stuff, and so that's good. Um, Esteri Ruiz steals a ton of bases, so he's a fun player. I mean, he can steal like 70 bases. I think he was in the Matt Olson trade. He was one of the players that came back in the in the Matt Olson trade. So there's that. For me, and uh, uh, the positive thing for me about the A's is they're going to be an easy over in the in the sports book. I think I saw they were set at fifty four and a half wins. I think that's an awesome and I think they can they can run off with fifty eight, fifty nine. Sorry, I'm going to go there. Who knows? Yeah, and then my Angels. Uh, I like I, I like Mike Trout to have a, a top ten MVP season again this year. Fully healthy. They'll keep him off his feet, the age from some days. We'll have him in center every single day. I think if he can play 140, 100, 135, 140 games, put up 35 homers, we're going to see, we could see the old Mike try to get. Yeah. Angels in the outfield. Great movie. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Christopher Lloyd, Brayden, Tony Danza. Yes. He's, he's going to be their ace this year. Uh, National League between the East. Um, first off, shout out Frank Patank for the Yard Mets. Uh, perennially in third place, he's hitting third place in that. Yeah, yeah, safe. Um, we're, we're gonna get some legendary rants this year. Um, uh, but I, I mean, it's a laugh, right? The it's definitely, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like they're never gonna quote unquote learn and be like, oh, we don't have to win the division now because the last two years we won it and the break and, and then we lost to the Phillies who were the wild card. You know, teams are just gonna win the way that they're gonna win. I don't think they'll run away with it. Um I do think Philadelphia's good. I I mean maybe the Braves should just learn to pace themselves a little bit better. I mean the thing they hit a ton of home runs. I don't know how much I trust the back of their rotation or their bullpen. To be honest, um, I do have my concerns. I think they have enough to win the division, but if you're looking bigger picture and making a real run, you know, I mean, Strider's been great in the regular season. He hasn't been great in the postseason, so he's kind of got to get that monkey off his back. Maybe they just need to avoid the Phillies. Maybe that's the key for them in the postseason. But I think the Phillies are a close second. Then I think the Mets will probably finish ahead of the Marlins. What do the Marlins really do? I mean, they've got some injuries in their rotation. I think the Nats are making they're they're it's going to be slow and they're making some strides. They they did win. I think they won 70 games last year, which they won 70 underratedly, games. Yeah, underratedly a great job by Davey Martinez. There's definitely some exciting players there. They don't have enough to truly compete, but they're not going to be like an Oakland A's type pushover at the bottom of the division. So it kind of gives a, even a little more credibility when your, quote, worst team is still an up-and-coming young team. Um, they're a couple of years away, but they're on the right track, I do believe. Yeah, it was a 16-game jump uh, from from 2022. They lost 107 in 2022, so I'm definitely out. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you on the uh, – I don't think it's going to be a complete blowout of the division. I would see the Braves putting up 100, 101 wins and Phillies probably – 94, 95. They could, they could be more than that, but uh, I think the Braves are the obvious, obvious pick there. Uh, and then on on the Nationals, I like a couple of the young guys. They've got C.J. Abrams and, and Mackenzie Gore. They just signed Joey Gallo, which has the opportunity to be really funny. Um, Caber Ruiz isn't a, ter- <laughs> isn't a terrible option back there. Uh, Josiah Gray was an All Star last year. At the, Maybe not deservedly, but he was there physically at the game. Uh, I, I with the with the Marlins pitching pitching injuries, I could see the Nats finishing in fourth above them. Yeah, to the Central. Why not? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying that was agreeing. Yeah, okay. um, to the Central. Uh, and this one a little different, I think. Um, this one's gonna be pretty competitive. I mean, you can look at 
everyone, maybe except for Milwaukee, and maybe make a case. Like you can say, hey, if this team goes on the right run at the right time, I feel like they can all win it at some point. The the Central, yeah, we, like it's not the AL Central. It's better. Yeah. It, well, or it is the AL Central, but better. That's how you describe it. One one of the two. Um, I think the Reds are good. Jonathan India thinks they're good. He he proclaimed them to be a playoff team um, after he was spared being traded because it was sounding like he was going to be traded. There's certainly a lot of excitement there. Uh, they've got a little bit of depth in their rotation. Um, it's be interesting to see if they can hold up. The Cubs, if there's one team that can maybe make that big jump, I mean, the Cubs were close last year. They were maybe a Suzuki drop fly ball from – getting into the playoffs. Who knows if they could have done what Arizona did instead. They bring back Bellinger. They uh, sign the uh, Imanaga. I know they lose Stroman, but I think they still get a little upgrade there. Pico Armstrong, another year of Dansby Swanson, say a Suzuki. They're they're an exciting team. Um, There's reason to think that they could win the Central, maybe even make a run in in the NL. I don't think the Bre- I mean the Brewers the, the Brewers are the NL twins, right? They're the, basically, but they won maybe one or two postseason series. They almost got to a World Series in eighteen, but I just don't I don't know. In St. Louis, they're just not the old school Cardinals. So I don't think they can win it. I I think it'll come down to the Cubs and Reds, honestly, this year. I do. And I would give the Cubs the edge. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was gonna say Cubs and Reds right at the top. Uh, I like I like the young guys the Reds have. Uh, hopefully, Ellie is what we think he's going to be. That would be a lot of fun to watch. Hunter Green throws gas. Nick Lodolo is nasty. Christian Encarnacion Strand. Spencer Steer. DJ Friedel was pretty good last year. They've got a solid lineup. The pitching is young. I think their rotation this year is going to be Green, Lodolo, uh, Abbott, Williamson, and then oh, Frankie Montas is starting opening day. So that's that's not a bad rotation. Open might be a little iffy outside of Alexis Diaz in the back end, but I like the Reds, and I I really like I like the the, the small amount of moves the Cubs made, bringing back Bellinger, getting Imanaga. Imanaga's gonna be a good three. The other three teams in the division, Cardinals have a retirement home in in their starting rotation. The youngest guy in their rotation is thirty two, averaging like thirty six. Those guys. Or all mid thirties, the Brewers, eh, maybe uh, they got they've got a good pitching factory over there. They got guys that, that are nasty, maybe can put it together. And then the Pirates are going to be the Pirates. I I, I I don't think they'll be as bad as the last couple of years, but I don't think they're running at the division this year. I think they can make a wild card push. Um, I think if they, especially because you get to, I mean, I assume they're going to add Steve at some point. You know, maybe. June or July for that because he's in Indianapolis right now, um, which is also who taught Andrew Love to slide or didn't really teach him to slide well. Um, but uh, I, I think you get you add him. It's it's like adding an arm at the deadline, and and if he is what everyone says he really is in the majors, that's going to be a really big arm to add. And I think they could make a late wild card push, even if they're on the outside looking in. Maybe in August, they you know if they go on the right run. If you get O'Neill Cruz really grooving at, at the right time, I think they could really make a push. Maybe sneak in, you know, with how many play- I always mix up all these different playoff formats. There's seven, seven playoff teams in total. Six. Six for the three wild cards. Six. Yeah, they could probably get, they could get to six. Yeah, six. So they could get to six. I think they could really get to the six seed, you know, playing a wild card game. They might not win, but it's a little. A little bit of experience for them. Well, we're about to get into the West, and that's probably what keeps the Pirates out of the wild card. First off, I don't, I don't believe in the Padres. They are too... First off, I just don't believe in them. I've been told to believe in them the past, like, three years, and it's been, like, almost the exact same thing. That, you know, Tatis goes out with his suspension for, like, a fumble ring. I, I don't know what he was rubbing on himself. Um, <laughs> I really don't believe in that. Uh, the Diamondbacks, you know, there was, I mean, there was six seed last year, right? Like they, they snuck in, they went on the five. They, they snuck in, they went on the right run at the right time. Um, San Francisco was the one I'm really looking at. Um, they've, they're, they're, I think their staff is pretty good. 
I think they're going to have a pretty good pitching staff this year. And then the Dodgers. You, you were right. Six seed. I'm sorry, by the way. It, it was six seed. Was. The, the Marlins were the five, I think. I was going to say, I held the title back yeah. and drew the Dodgers in the first round. They did. In fact, because I, 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 I was thinking the Dodgers won, but they weren't. They, the yeah. Braves were. It's so it's because it, I was applauding that because it was like what football was before they expanded to 14. So it was like the one, two get buys, which makes more sense in football, less sense in baseball. Um, but yeah, Dimebacks were so my apologies. The, the uh, but you know, I like that the other teams in the division have all, with the exception of the Rockies, who I, I guess. I don't know why they exist. I like guess just to help these. They guys. are so much fun too. Like they have the stadium. They have like you can hit the brand seven hundred foot home runs. Yeah, they have the awesome vest jersey. Like I, if, I don't know if they're wearing that this year, but they're not. They need to bring it back. I play with the Rockies in the show, and my rec league baseball team in in uh, back in the day, and well, it's in DC was uh, the Rockies also. So I'm a big fan of their of their branding and their um their whole thing. But they suck, and th- their fans hate Dick Monfort, the owner. They hate him. But the other, give credit to the other teams in the division, have at least made some moves in response to the Dodgers' absurd spree. Right, the Padres made the move; they traded for Dylan Cease. See how that works out for them. The Giants went out and got Blake Snell and Matt Chapman. I'm not a big Chapman guy, but still nice. At the end. And and they got the, the Korean player as well, Lee. His name is Joshua Lee. Uh, Lee, yeah, and and Arizona got well, Erod, and now he's hurt. But they got Montgomery, um, and they picked up Eugenio Suarez and Jock Peterson, former Dodger. So yeah, those aren't you know Snell's a big move. Not all of them are earth shattering moves, but they're just saying like, hey, we're not just gonna stand here let the Dodgers just bully everyone with their wallet the way they've been doing for a decade. Um, I mean, that said, I don't see any of those teams out. Out running, out gunning the Dodgers for the NL West, but you should remember that the last two years, Dodgers have won the division respectively by twenty-two games and sixteen games, and lost to those second-place teams in the NLDS both years, which is amazing. I hope it comes around, and then the Giants get their turn this year because the Dodgers got the Giants in twenty twenty-one, right? That was the same thing. So, like the last three years, the winner of the NL West has lost to the second place team in the NL West in the postseason. So this whole, you know, like we got to win, the Dodgers are going to win the division. They're minus 400, 500, whatever. Um, but the other teams know like, Hey, we can, it's everyone else has done it. You know, the, these wild card teams in the NL West. So I've got LA winning it. Of course, it's their birthright. Um, second place is tough. Cause the Padres, they could be like Gonzaga in NCAA where like all these years when everyone expects them to be good, that's when they just completely flame out. But maybe now that people are forgetting about them, maybe they'll have more fun. They, they, they played a couple exciting games with the Dodgers in Korea. I'm not saying that that's going to play out like that the whole season. Those balls are juiced. They definitely juiced. Yeah. It must be like a sandbox stadium. I'll, I'll go with Arizona to finish in second. Then San Francisco, then San Diego. And then Colorado. That would probably, I mean, it's t- to me, like two, three, four, you could convince me any of those, but uh, any order of those three teams would work. But for the sake of Arizona being the defending league champs, I'll put them in second. I'll put the Giants there because they've got two Cy Young finalists from last year heading up their rotation. Um, even though I have some questions about their lineup, and then I'll go with San Diego. But it wouldn't shock me if San Diego even finished in second, to be honest. Yeah, I, I think the Dodgers are the obvious choice running away with that, but that's going to make the NL wild card race really interesting between those three, coupled up with the Phillies and maybe a team or two in the Central. I, I, I like, obviously, I like what the Dodgers did this offseason. I, I think that goes without saying. Um, but the, the sneaky underrated uh, part of the Dodgers this year is they're getting Walker Buehler back, and that's a guy with postseason with World Series experience. And it's, they need anybody they can that can pitch in a playoff game. Um, Yamamoto, I don't. I'm not worried about him after the first start. I, I think I think he'll adjust. That he's 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 a big game pitcher as well over in Japan, and you know, he, I, I like him to do big things this year and and in the future. But I, I 
I'm very, very much cemented in the Diamondbacks finishing second in the division. I love that pitching staff. The, the rotation is so good. Gallon, uh, Merrill Kelly, I mean, when they get Erod back, Erod, um, Montgomery, and then I, I really like what we saw from Brandon Fott in that playoff run, World Series run last year. Um, and then at three and four, I think you can kind of flip flop Giants and Padres anywhere you want. Uh, Padres his starting rotation, I think, is is not talked about enough, especially now that they got Cease at the top or at least close to the top. And I, and I like the moves the Giants made. They added some pop, they added some some good defensive player, a couple arms to their pitching staff. But um, I think the Giants are like the Rangers in the sense that they're waiting for guys to come back mid-season, big pitchers. So I, I'd, I'd probably edge the um, Padres ahead of the Giants. Um, but I, I think it could flip flop either way, honestly. And then you got Chris Bryant and, and, and his, his Rockies at the bottom. There's <laughs> not much to say about them. I like Nolan Jones. Me too. All right. Well, we're going to have to wrap up here in a few minutes, but I'm going to have you guys give me your one through six seats and then, um, your CS matchups and then your World Series match on your World Series winner. Uh, so I'll start with Mike. All right. So what division winners, wild cards, and playoffs? Yeah. Um, all right. I go Orioles, Tigers, Astros, Braves, Cubs, Dodgers. Jeez, wild cards in the AL. Uh, I'll say Texas. Definitely Texas. Uh, I don't think it's got to be two AL East teams. I'm going to say, I said, the Yankees will figure out a way to get in, I feel like. And uh, hold on, repeat, repeat. Just start with the start with the American League. Sorry. Sorry. So American League division winners, I got the O's, the Tigers, and the the Astros. And then as wild cards, I've got I'll go Rangers. I will go Yankees. I'm going to take Seattle just to squeak in. I mean, somebody's going to, whoever takes that, like, you know, waste the spot. Is it Minnesota, Toronto, Tampa? Like I said, all the same teams, just pick one. Um, I will go for the championship series in the AL. Hate to do it. Sort of hedging my bets here. I'm going Houston over the Orioles. Hope I'm wrong. I hope it's the Orioles. I really do. But I, it's just every year, like, people just so, want so badly to believe it won't be the Astros. And they've been in it seven years in a row. They've won seven straight American League Division Series. So what's one more? Um, and then National League, I will go uh, Braves, Cubs, Dodgers to win the division. And then I will go Phillies. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go the Reds. I'm going to say the Reds get in. And I will take the Diamondbacks to get in. But we're finally going to get that Dodgers over Braves in LCS that we were supposed to get the last two years. And then we will finally get that Dodgers-Astros World Series that we've been waiting for, oh. so, which would be horrible. This whole thing would be horrible. This is why I'm hoping it doesn't happen, but it's I'm just <laughs> protecting against that, making these picks. And I'll take Dodgers over Astros in the World Series. All right. Um, Kale, let me just finish this. Okay, let's start with the American League. All right, American League, I have the Orioles, Tigers, and Astros as well. Uh, my wild card, uh, my top wild card, I got the Rangers. Second spot, I got the Blue Jays. And regretfully, the third spot, I will go the Yankees. All right, National League? Or uh, ALCS, ALCS. My ALCS? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be Orioles, Astros for me. Over Astros? Orioles over the Astros. Okay. And then National? National League, I have the Braves, Cubs, and Dodgers. Mm -hmm. With uh, the wild card teams, Phillies at the top, then D-backs, and then the Padres. I think the Padres sneak in that six seed. And then NLCS? I, I will also go with the long-awaited Braves, Dodgers, NLCS. I've got the break oh, over the Dodgers. Oh, Braves, Braves over the Dodgers. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to get a little weird with it. Uh, oh, and who's your World Series? Oh, yeah. 
Braves over Dodgers, and then who's winning the World Series? Uh, in, in the official Nick Markakis series, it will be the Braves over the Orioles in six. Okay. Um, I'm going to get a little weird with it. Uh, I mean, starting out with the Orioles, easy. Um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go a little different. I'm just trying to look here. Um, I'm going to go – I'll give it to Minnesota. I feel like that's more of a shock pick. Um, even though you guys both took the Tigers, which was shocking. Um, and then I'm going to go with Houston as well. I just, I always trust, I have to trust Houston. Wild card, I'm going to give it, yeah, I'll do the Rangers at five. Give me, give me Kansas City at six, or at five, sorry. And then, um, do I want to say the Red Sox? Like, is that, is that so ridiculously Crazy. I feel like I have to throw out a curveball. I'm going to throw in the Red Sox because I have to throw in a curveball there. Um, I'm going to say the ALCS Orioles over... Let's say Orioles over Rangers. I want to see the Rangers do it again. And then National League, I'm going to go Braves. Braves. I really like the Reds here as well. And then the Dodgers, of course. And then a wild card, I'll stay uh, Philly at four, um, at five, let's say Arizona. And then at six, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh, just to throw another one in there. Uh, my, yeah, somebody's got to be the interest here. Uh, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the adventure. Really, I'm like a faith, yeah. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> we, we both had the Rangers in the World Series at midseason last year. Yeah, and you you were you said Marlins, which could have been the D backs, and I said the Braves, which was the easy pick and didn't work out. So, uh, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say Philly goes on another run. I think they're gonna go on a run. They're gonna beat the Dodgers in the NLCS. I'd love to see that playoff atmosphere in full force again. Yeah, yeah. Imagine. I mean, because it's been probably the most electric atmosphere the last couple of years. Love him or hate him, but Philly has really brought it in those two postseasons and kudos to Arizona for going in there and winning those last two games. But that would be lit to see, you know, Otani and Betts and Freeman come into the, to the, uh, so the vet, the, the bank, or they call it, not the link, the bank, I don't The bank. It's the bank. Uh, I'm going to go Philly over the Orioles. I think the Orioles are still super young. And I, I also picked Philly over the Dodgers because it feels like sometimes with these teams that just spend, spend, spend like they're, officially going all in they end up getting burned in the end anyways I hope plus so. i think they they still have like it's not like this is the one year the doctors have like you have 10 years of show a left like it's not exactly like oh this is it like this is your last opportunity and the orioles you got the orioles are young right like they're gonna have these opportunities and i think you have to climb the ladder before you reach the top i'm thinking maybe next year or two years uh from now for the orioles so um I'm just going through, and then we'll wrap up. Mike has the Orioles, Tigers, Astros as division winners. Uh, Rangers, Yankees, Seattle's wild card. Houston, the O's, and the ALCS. Braves, Cubs, Dodgers as division winners. Phillies, Reds, Diamondbacks, wild cards. Uh, Dodgers over Braves, and then Dodgers over Astros in the World Series, getting the revenge. Uh, Caleb is Orioles, Tigers, Astros, division winners. Rangers, Blue Jays, Yankees as wild cards. Orioles over Astros in the ALCS. Uh, Braves, Cubs, Dodgers as division winners. Phillies, D-backs, Padre as wild cards. Braves over Dodgers. Braves over O's and six in the mid Arcadia series. Uh, I have Orioles, Twins, Astros, and uh, as division winners, Rangers, Kansas City, and the Red Sox as wild cards. And then Orioles over Rangers in the ALCS. Uh, Braves, Reds, Dodgers as division winners. Philly, Arizona, and Pittsburgh as wild card, and Philly over the Dodgers in the NLCS. Philly over four of the Orioles in the World Series. Um, so we're gonna wrap up right there. Thank you to everybody who's listening. Um, again, this is a this is like a good preview for how content is gonna go uh, further. Thursdays are gonna be for sports, and then our Monday episodes are gonna be more fun, silly stuff. I'm sure you guys will be making appearances. We'll be doing drafts brackets and maybe tier lists and stuff like that um make sure to like subscribe comment and we will see you on monday